Guys, thanks for turning into uh, this episode of the Barbell Jobs Business Podcast. Today, we're going a little off topic. We're not exactly talking business, but we're going to bring up something controversial that's going around the community right now that I think a lot of people will either want to hear and love or hate that we're even talking about it, but listen in anyway. So today, I've got a very special guest. His name's uh, John Romano. He's been around forever in the bodybuilding industry and in the CrossFit industry. And I, I can't do his introduction justice. So, John, won't you uh, go ahead and let the people know who you are? I'm just a guy who's uh, in, the, in the shadows <laughs> doing what I do. Well, what, what, is, what is that exactly that you do that? The CrossFit world would uh, have interest in or have already found you about. Well, I prep athletes of various sports for for their competitions. So um, you know, I work with bodybuilders, MMA guys, football players, Olympic athletes, and CrossFitters. Um, actually, quite a bit now. It didn't used to be. You know, f- um, several years ago, maybe ten years ago, I would say the majority of my clients were bodybuilders getting ready for shows and now you know of course bodybuilding is no drug testing so there was um you know pretty much you do whatever you want bodybuilding and then now um you know the majority of my clientele is crossfit athletes and their their mantra is help me cheat and not get caught okay so for the people who don't know you or haven't figured out what we're talking about yet, we, uh, with, with all the people getting tested positive for steroids, performance enhancing drugs, peptides, SARMs, whatever the case, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are a guy who actually helps these top athletes with their cycles and how to get around these tests. Am I, am I right on that? That is correct. That's that's I'm, crazy. I, I'm a guy that does that. There are more of me than just me. See, that never occurred to me. I, I thought you had the, cor- the market cornered there. Nope, nope, nope. I am one of many. That's didn't expect that. All right. So, can you? Uh, can you let me know, let us know what the, the, the process is when someone calls you? Um, I, I mean, hell, man, I don't, I don't have a clue what happens here. This is <laughs> new for me and everyone who's listening. Well, I mean, I don't understand your question. Okay, so the CrossFit athletes want to go to the games. Right. They want to take that next step. They think everyone else is using uh, steroids or performance-enhancing drugs. I need to as well. I found... Uh, I found your number. Can you help me? Okay. Um, there's two. There's two versions of that help. One is if the athlete is virtually unknown, and we have the luxury of time on our side before we have to show up at competition. That's usually the only reason. The only place you really have to worry is regionals. So um, we have pretty much the whole year up until just before the regionals <clears throat> to, um, you know, to enjoy an off season doing drugs. The second group is the group that's in the high, uh, in what we call the whereabouts pools, the, the, the high risk pool, where you're going to be um, filling out whereabouts forms. You're going to be surprised, to, you know, randomly tested out of competition testing, that that's a whole other bag of problems that we have to deal with. But you know, we get away with that too. the The system is not foolproof. There's still enough loopholes in it to weave and bob through. And um, just look at the athletes. You can see that you know, barring the 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 odd outlier, the majority of those guys up there and girls are using gear. And when you so, say majority, I, I know there's a, a lot of people who they look at the athletes in CrossFit and, you know, they want to believe everyone's natural, that it's a fair playing field. All the ones that get busted are the only ones that are doing anything. Like, do you have an estimate on 
say at the games, like maybe a percentage of how many of those people that you would know for sure are actually using something? No, I wouldn't have a percentage um, calculation on that. But I, I look, in any sport, and I'm not pigeonholing CrossFit, the top of the top, the elite, use drugs in all sports, baseball, football, basketball, all of them, every single one of them. So, you know, to say that CrossFit is immune to that and that their top people don't use drugs while exhibiting superhuman performance and comp- condition and body composition, it's, it's, just, it's just not believable anymore. You know, you look at how CrossFit athletes have changed in appearance over the last you know, five or six years, you you cannot tell me or anybody else that's watching that, that things aren't different. So while CrossFit may have started out as this super squeaky clean, holier than thou tribe of uh, amazing athletes, the, 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 the the specter of winning and, and um, all the go, all the spoils that go along with it, the contracts, the appearances, the fame, all of that is regulated by drugs. Because if you are a superior athlete and you compete in, in, at at the top of the the top of whatever sport you're playing, you are going to be competing against people who are using drugs. So the mindset is, if they're using them, I got to use them because there's otherwise they're going to have an advantage. So the genie only has to get out of the bottle one time. One one athlete has to get caught. One athlete has to admit it. One athlete has to be, you know, the poster child for, you know, for drug use. And then it, the cat's out of the bag. Everybody knows then that somebody the the, 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 the supposition now has teeth. And people realize, yeah, people are using drugs. And, you know, th- there was a colleague of mine who answered a question like that. And they said, how, do, how can you tell if an athlete is using drugs and how an athlete is not using drugs? And the guy said it was simple. The ones who are using the drugs are winning. The ones who are not using the drugs are losing. Pretty simple. Now, so, that does, does it make that big of a difference, though, for someone? Um you got someone who's natural, someone that has uh, that's using, say, their second, third, I don't know, however long they've been using steroids, but their training age is the same. Say everything is equal across the board, except one person's working with you, the other person's eating paleo. Is, is there that big of a difference? Yes, because with me, you get it's not just drugs. You get you get nutrition, supplementation. You get I mean, it's the, it's the whole system. Your whole body has to be working properly to take advantage of, you know, whatever drug cycle you're going to do. <clears throat> so that means you have to be healthy. We read your blood work. You know, we know where all your hormone levels are at um, and bef- before we ever take a single drug. So, um, you know, th- there, there, there's a lot to be said for, you know, uh, for, for, for planning and doing things correctly. But yeah, I mean, somebody working with me versus somebody not doing anything is going to have a tremendous advantage. Wow, guys, you know, I've seen uh, like I'm, I'm I, was, I did uh, I competed in MMA for many years, and the people who would use stuff would have the argument of, well, I'm just doing it for recovery that it's not going to help my hand-eye coordination. It's not going to help my reflexes or my, my instincts inside the cage. It's not. Not at all. But not a bit. Not, my, not even the slightest bit. But my thought always was, you know, it came back to when he says, you know, they would say, I'm using it for recovery. Because right. a lot well, of these people work out hours a day. Well, that, that's the only place steroids do anything is during recovery. That's all they do. All they do is, and they, all they do is assist in recovery. So, <clears throat> muscles, muscles and strength are not built in the gym. They are built while you're sleeping. So, the gym is where you ex- is where you execute the stimulus for the growth or the increase in strength. And then you go home and eat and rest. And then the body does what it's supposed to do with that stimulus and respond to the stress you put it under. So. The recovery is the key to everything. If you don't recover from your workouts, you're not going to improve. You're going to be overtrained, 
and exhibit the symptoms of overtraining and be worthless. So, uh, you know, the, the, the better you can recover, the more recovery you can get, the more time you can spend recovering, and the more efficient your body can be at recovering, the better you're going to, the stronger and faster and bigger you're going to be. You know, that reminds me of something. A couple of years ago, I had a friend who, uh, she made it to the CrossFit Regionals. Mm -hmm. And she was a great athlete. Um, 99% positive she was clean. It's nothing that we we would have ever questioned. So she's getting ready to go to regionals. And to up her uh, her conditioning and training, she pays to follow one of the games athletes, uh, uh, one of their training plans. So all of a sudden she goes from working out two times a day to working out almost eight hours a day. And, th and then she gets rhabdo. And gets what? Gets a uh, gets rhabdo. Her muscles just freaking turned to mush on her. She ends up in the hospital. Uh, it almost killed her. Wow. Trying to follow what this other person was doing, and so that makes me think maybe if maybe it's the recovery. That's how that person, the person that she was, uh, she bought the training plan from that was following her same stuff for the games. That's why that person was able to do so much. And then this woman got seriously injured and hospitalized by the same training program maybe the other person could recover so much better well i mean you, I, you can't just take a statement like that and say well oh well that's because she was using drugs i i, I would i wouldn't do that i mean obviously you're, you're talking about two different people you're talking about two different bodies two different systems two different biomechanics and bio um <clears throat> biochemical makeups you know, one could easily be superior genetically gifted athlete and, and the other one not. And there, there's your difference right there. You know, genetics is, is, is the greatest monster in sports. And, you know, you take a person with great genetics in any sport and they become the bellwether by which every other athlete is measured. So if you don't measure up to the freak the genetic monster that's that's number one, then, you know, you're going to do whatever it takes to get on their level because they're that good. So you can think they're doing drugs or you can know that they're not. It doesn't matter. They're better than you. And if they're better than you, you're going to do everything you can do to be as good as them if you are, if you are truly a competitive athlete. So... Uh, you know, it, it, the performance is the gauntlet. That's what gets thrown down. Everybody is going to strive to achieve that performance level. Some people, very, very few people, are able to do that without any assistance. Most people cannot. And they are the ones that, you know, seek out help. I'm seeing these people who are uh, getting tested for stuff. And, or the ones that are popping on the tests. And there's all these different chemical compounds. Um, like there's a girl, I don't want to say her name, but I'm sure people can look it up and find her. She was recent. She got busted for, uh, uh, it was called Trenbolin. Trenbolin. Trenbolone. <laughs> Trenbolone. Is that, uh, like, do all these chemicals have a difference on the body? Do, uh, are there some that women should be taking, shouldn't be taking versus the men? Absolutely. Absolutely. Without question. The, a, a, a girl has no business whatsoever taking Trenbolone. Whoever's, whoever prescribed Trenbolone to a woman is an absolute moron. That is not what you, that is not a, a, a female friendly drug. There's probably three or four drugs out there that should never, ever, ever, ever be used on a female athlete. And Trenbolone is one of them. Yeah, I mean, maybe they just haven't realized there's someone like you out there who can actually lead them on these paths. Because I see so many different compounds that people are getting busted for. And half of them, you know, I've never even heard of. And I used to be a bodybuilder back in the day. So there's uh, <laughs> these new SARMs and peptides. I don't even know what the hell these things are. Selective androgen modulators. Yeah, you know, selective androgen receptor modulators. Those are SARMs. And the peptides, there's, you know, a lot of people are using those. Some are having success with them, some of them not. Most people are failing their drug tests with them because we don't know enough about them yet. See, the thing is, when I, when I, 
when I prep an athlete for a competition, they are competing clean. So they can they can they can take any drug test they want during competition and they're going to pass because we we cleaned them out before they got there. So there's this there's this grave misconception in a, in athletics where people believe that the day you stop taking drugs, the, you immediately lose every single gain you got on them, which is completely false. You can maintain for months the gains you made on on a, a, a good steroid cycle that was properly administered and, and managed. You can keep those gains for months without taking a single drug. So, you know, for me, it's better that we have an off season to work together with. We can use as much drugs, you know, within the specifications um, uh, re with regard to their clearing times and their, you know, the, the, the way their metabolites get out of your body. You know, we, we can enjoy that off season and make tremendous gains. And then as we get closer to the time, you know, around, around you know, May, when you got to be clean, start cleaning out you know, start attenuating dosages and moving over to faster acting drugs to the point where, you know, I'm bringing you in, you know, three weeks before your, your, um, three to four weeks before your first possibility of a drug test, you will be completely clean. So to piss in all the cups you want, you're going to pass every drug test. And, and, and we know you're going to pass because we did our own testing off season. So I know how, if you're my athlete, I know how long it's going to take for your TE ratio to get back within normal range. I know how long it's going to take or certain metabolites to clear your body because we've done the tests. We know. We have done the homework, so we have that information. And so um, at any given time during the year, you know, we're, we're ready to go do battle with, with the testing, uh, you know, police because – I'm ready. I, I know my athletes are going to pass. I've never in 30 years, I've never had an athlete fail a drug test. So wait, if, if people can get cleaned up, if, if they can, if they can piss clean, they still have, you know, the performance enhancing results from doing a cycle. Why are people being, why, why are people failing the test? I don't know. Oh. Probably because they're taking <laughs> drugs. Oh, well, I guess that makes sense. I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're taking shit. They're, they shouldn't be taking at a time. They shouldn't be taking it. It's absolute stupidity. Whoever is advising them is, in, is a moron because they're getting caught. If, not only are they getting caught, they're getting caught with things they should never be taking. I heard this other girl was taking Anadrol. That's, that's just a drug a, <clears throat> a woman should never, ever do, ever ever and why well, they're doing it for crossfit when there's other compounds readily available that are far more friendly to a female composition why are they not doing those drugs i mean i can understand if they're getting popped for those drugs but they're not they're getting popped for drugs they shouldn't even be doing so the fact that they're getting busted and they're getting busted for drugs they shouldn't be doing leads me to believe they have no clue what they're doing i mean you think it's possible that they're just looking at bro science on the internet and probably you know, searching probably. what they can and buying drugs off, you know, I don't know. Probably however. the internet is a very dangerous place to search for information, especially when it comes to something as serious as maintaining your status as a competitive athlete, you get busted, you know, you're done for two years. Uh, someone more. just got a four year band. On well, their, I, I, there's two, and there's one. four. Depends on, you know, who's, who's giving you the, the punishment, but yeah, two to four years is your first, is your first ticket, you know, and, and to play games with that kind of, with that kind of seriousness, that kind of seriousness of the penalty that you're going to get is just insanity. So I don't know if these people are just desperate or they're just dumb or what they are, but, uh, but what I'm seeing happening and 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 the fact that it's happening and the fact that it's happening and uncovering the drugs that they're uncovering to me is just an absolute complete insanity maybe there's not a i've never searched for it, but maybe there's not a lot out there on the internet when you type in crossfit steroid cycle 
Well, I mean, yeah. I, you know, there probably isn't, but I mean, that's not how you go about doing it. Uh, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to, you know, understand your sport, know who the people are that, that are, that are who the players are, who the coaches are, who the coaches associate with. I mean, I, I, I'm not hard to find, but you got to know, you got to know you're looking for me. But, you know, that's, that, that's neither here nor there as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's, it's a matter of, it's a matter of how do you know when you're in, enlisting the, the, the service of somebody that they know what they're doing. And, you know, you can't find an athlete on the face of this earth who's going to tell you that they worked with me and they failed their drug test. That is not going to happen ever. So, um, you know, you, 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 you've got to choose wisely when it comes to something like this because the penalty is just too severe. You know, when I hear about these people getting busted and they lose these endorsements and they can't compete for X amount of time, my mind keeps going back to, you know, the worst case scenario is, well, your mama knows now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these girls got to go tell their mama, you know, it's all over the Internet. All of her friends know, hey, sorry, I've been taking steroids. Yeah, I, but, I mean, it's, it's I mean, that, that's. You know, in and of itself, I wouldn't I wouldn't chastise anybody for taking steroids. But I mean, to, I mean, fail. Like I said before, failing is bad enough, but failing for drugs that you should never, ever be taking is just just makes you out to be an absolute idiot. I mean, you can't look at somebody that that that, that just they, you can't look at a girl who just failed the drug test for Anadrol and say, wow, there's a mental level person. You know, you don't. You, 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 they're, they're publicly stigmatized as being an idiot. And I'm, I'm sure that compounds the bad feeling they're going to get by not having to compete for two years. You, you not only get banned for two years, but you get labeled a moron. So, you know, um, I, I just think that and, and, the, and the, the rate that it's happening now is just it's, it's just really um, eye opening. I mean, more more girls now are getting popped for more drugs they shouldn't be doing than I've ever seen them out before. I uh, when I, before we had our conversation, I started trying to do a little internet searching on steroids, and. Everything comes up with all these horrible uh, health consequences. Mm -hmm. Like, is that myth? Is it fact? Like, can you get your body back after you use them, or do they fuck you up that bad? Do girls grow a, you know, a freaking Adam's apple when this when they? Well, yeah, this yeah. Stuff? I mean, yes. I mean, side effects. Side effects for women are far more severe and and long lasting than they are for men. Side effects for men are relatively few and are most always all reversible. So, I mean, I've seen guys on, on tremendous steroid cycles for a long period of time, and then they just go off them, get cleaned up, you know, get everything working back again, and everything comes back to normal. So, you know, while there's no such thing as a safe drug, steroids in and of themselves compared to the other drugs you take, even over-the-counter drugs like Tylenol, Steroids are far safer statistically. So, you know, the media, you know, jumped on the bandwagon during the baseball strike when when they were their job was to vilify steroids and, you know, lend credence to, you know, the 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 bill that made them schedule three drugs and all of the sports that were, you know, banning them and, and you know, the disgrace of baseball and subsequently Lance Armstrong. You know, the media has a has a has a stronghold on people's opinions because today in America the media tells you what to think. So if the media wants you to think steroids are bad and they're going to kill you, that's what they say, that's what the people listen to, that's what the people believe because they heard it on TV. And so now you have a whole contingent of people who believe steroids are bad and will kill you with absolutely no medical evidence, no statistics, no sto no no study, no research, zero. Just the m noise coming out of a talking head on TV. So can they be done in a healthy way? Absolutely. Absolutely. They wouldn't give them to the sick people otherwise. Hmm. The, we, uh, tend to, we tend to forget that. We tend to forget that steroids were designed to help sick people. So, 
they weren't designed with cognitive power, meaning that they'll work great if you're sick, but if you're a healthy athlete, they'll kill you. So that, that nonsense is just completely un, unfounded. You know, I saw that, uh, I, I was reading some stuff on Lance Armstrong, and it said that he was the most tested athlete on earth. That is correct. And he never failed a test. Nope. That's, I mean, I can't even fathom how that can happen. Simple. Uh, his, his guy that was coaching him knew what he was doing. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple. <laughs> the, uh, man, that, this is a lot to process. So these women who are taking the steroids, they, the ones that are getting popped obviously don't have someone like you in their corner. Or if they do, it's, well, it's probably someone from their gym or whatever the case, so they shouldn't be listening to anyway. So there are long-term health effects for these girls, though, right? No, not, not health effects. There are long-term side effects that are you know, irreversible. They may get hair growing on their chin and their chest or their shoulders. Their clit grows and that doesn't really go back down to normal. Their voice can change and that really doesn't ever come go back to normal. Um, but these are just, you know, these are, these, are, these are side effects that many women accept as part of the deal because they're doing everything it takes to win. It doesn't alter your health in such a way that, you know, they're going to be, you know, riddled with disease and die in 10 years. That's not going to happen. But, you know, they, they, they are going to carry, they are going to carry some, some of what they think are badges of honor of, of their, of their, you know, tenure under the, under, you know, a steroid cycle. So those things are going to stay with them. For a guy, the side effects are most all, always reversible. So, um, you know, the studies come out that show health benefits for steroids, especially long term. And these are things that, you know, the media never, ever reports on. They only want to hear about the bad stuff. And actually, right now, it's not even it's 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 an it's a non-operative right now. Steroids are not sexy in the news right now. They're talking about now they're talking about opioids and and, you know, that's the big thing and how heroin's making a comeback and, you know, bath salts and the morons who are eating Tide Pods. So <laughs> steroids are steroids are pretty much not even talked about anymore. I mean, you only hear about even you only hear about steroid busts when they're huge. You don't hear about anybody getting hurt on them, dying on them, killing anybody on them. They're, they're virtually immune to, to news reports right now. So I've been uh, hearing about. Oh, oh, not hearing, but TRT has become a very common thing. Like, I know a lot of guys who's on TRT. That's basically steroids, isn't it? That's testosterone, right? T steroids, yeah. It's t t it's TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. That's what the T stands for, testosterone. Testosterone is an androgen. It's incorrectly termed a steroid, but it's, it is in that family. But, you know, for the layperson, they can go ahead and say steroid. Um, but yeah, testosterone is, is, you know, while, while, while it is an androgen, it still gets put into the steroid class, but yeah, that's, that's what TRT is. Steroid, it's, it's, it's hormone, it's testosterone replacement therapy because when a male ages after about age 35, his natural levels of testosterone begin to decline. By the time he's 50, he's at probably 30% of what he was when he was 18 or 19. So to, to bring yourself back up to, no, to a level that you were at when you were younger is what, why we call it replacement. You're replacing the dose that you're taking a, a dose that replaces the level that you were at when you were younger. So um, I, I, I would say any man over 45 years old should be taking testosterone. So, I mean, if they're giving out as mess, I, I probably know at least a couple handfuls of guys who are on TRT now, and they all talk about how great they feel, how you're you know, talking they feel younger. Oh, well. But it, it, everyone's always talks about how, uh, how great they feel, you know, how, you know, they, they got more energy, how they feel better. 
So, I mean, I guess right there is proof that if doctors are giving it to people, it can be, you know, healthy and good for you. Oh, if there's, look, like I said, there's no such thing as a safe drug. There are drugs, certainly, that are safer than others. There are drugs that are more beneficial than others. There is no argument against replacing the level of hormones in your body to where they were when you were younger. There's no argument against it. There is absolutely zero in the medical literature that's going to point to an unfavorable result when a, when a man takes testosterone to replace the levels that were that have diminished over due to age. And the same goes with growth hormone. What exactly is growth hormone? Growth hormone is growth hormone. It's what your pituitary gland secretes in order to incite growth in your cells, growth and repair in your in your in your cells. So uh, it's it's an integral part of growth. And and that's another steroid that no, people that's take. not steroid. Oh, my apologies. Stero steroids are sex hormones. They're they're either derived from testosterone or DHT, dihydrotestosterone, and they're all derived. They're all in some way a a reworked molecule of testosterone or dihydrotestosterone. Um, and it, it, growth hormone is a pituitary hormone that's completely not related to steroids. Gotcha. See, I've uh, I've I've never heard of anyone getting busted for that. Well, yes, because, because there's no test for it. So people can take people can take that, and it's they can get popped. Well, you know they have they have a urine test that's supposedly good now, but you know it's still suspect. Um, growth hormone within about 20 minutes of taking growth hormone, growth hormone is degraded in your liver and broken down into other compounds, so that there's it's, there's none of it left to be tested for. So um, especially in urine. So it's, it's, it's really easy to get away with, um, taking growth hormone leading up to a competition. And in some cases you can just stay on it. Is this one of those that CrossFit athletes or, you know, specifically CrossFit athletes tend to take? It's one that specifically most athletes take, hmm. including CrossFit. So going back to when we were talking earlier about the size of these guys, I've noticed that a lot of these guys look like freaking bodybuilders now. Well, yeah. And, you know, I remember back in my day of being a bodybuilder, there's no way in hell I was going to try to do that much cardio, uh -huh. carry that much muscle mass. <laughs> well, you know, the interesting thing about CrossFit type training as opposed to cardio for body composition is that it's far more efficient as a fat burning mechanism to train in a CrossFit style than it is to train uh, in, in, or prep in a bodybuilding style. Um, all of my bodybuilders who are getting ready for competitions don't do typical cardio. They do almost like a CrossFit routine for their cardio session. And I get what they would normally have to spend, you know, one or two, even three hours of doing steady state cardio on a treadmill, we can get away with doing just 20 minutes, you know, of, of, of a, of a CrossFit style, um, circuit. Um, and then maybe towards the end, we add some Tabata, you know, a, a minute at a time. And that's really all, all you got to do. So the, the body composition enjoyed by CrossFit, CrossFit athletes is because it's a very effective way of burning fat. Um, it's just, it's also a very effective way of getting overtrained. So there's a balance that has to be, you know, paid to, when you're training for CrossFit because most of the CrossFit people I've worked with are chronically overtrained. And the, one of the hardest jobs I have as a coach is convincing them to take a rest day or two. Yeah, you know, a lot of these people, I hear about their rest days, and they're like, oh, well, my rest day is active recovery. I'm going to go run yeah. a 5K. Half marathon. Right, exactly. Stupidity. Yeah, it, my rest day is like, fuck you. I'm taking a nap and playing PlayStation. Right. Rest, rest day means you pretty much are laying down all day. 
that's a rest day. Rest day is not a recovery row and a half marathon. That's not a rest day. See, you know, in my own gym, we used to program a, uh, every Wednesday we would take off. Uh -huh. And people, they just want to do more and more. So now I had to give in. And now Wednesday is all a complete core day. So they have that option. And I'm still trying to hold them back a little bit. Well, you know, when they, when, when they, when they come down with overtraining syndrome, you know, overtraining uh, um, <clears throat> characteristics, you know, they know why. Your body needs to rest. It will not grow and repair if it's not recovering. It's just a basic fact of human physiology. Humans grow and repair at rest. If you're not resting, you are shortchanging everything you put into the gym because your body's not able to take advantage of it. So, you know, you can try all you want to torch your body into submission, but if you don't have the two things that it needs, nutrition and rest, you are not going to get any results. So, um, you know, there's plenty of people out there who are burning their adrenal glands out because they're, they're guzzling caffeine to try to make, you know, to try to maintain these two, three, four hour a day workouts twice a day, whatever. And they're just, they're just hurting themselves. They're not going to be champion athletes. They're not going to win shit. And they're, and they're probably going to do long-term damage to themselves metabolically down the road. When they're taking steroids or other performance enhancing drugs, whether that's growth hormone or any of the other things we discuss, does that give them, is that why they can do so many workouts? They, they recover much faster, so they don't need a rest day at that point? No, no. You always need a rest day. Okay? You got to look at it like this. The, the, body, the body doesn't know what you're trying to do. It doesn't, it, the body cannot perceive CrossFit. The body cannot perceive bodybuilding. The body is a reactive organism. It reacts to what happens to it. So... If you put it under stress, it, it reacts. And it, it, an adaptive response to stress, in this case, weight training or, or training in general, CrossFit training, call it whatever you want, that, that training is done at a level that threatens the existence of the body. So the body actually falls into a survival mode. If you're training correctly, if you're training optimally, hard enough, your body is, is stressed. And it reacts to the stress by producing more muscle. The, the, the message the body is receiving is that the current musculature is inadequate to perform what's being asked of it. So that continued repetitive stress of, of having to do more work, harder work, heavier work in an unrelenting sort of way leads the body to believe that it must survive this. And the only way it's going to survive it is by being more powerful. The only, 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 only way the body does that is at rest. There's no other way to do it. It doesn't grow in the gym. It doesn't grow on a tree. It doesn't grow in your car. It grows when you're sleeping. The growth and repair that your workouts require only occurs at rest. Only. So if you're not resting, you are not recovering. If you're not recovering, you're not improving. If you're not improving, it's probably because you're overtraining. And that is the best description of super compensation I've ever heard. <laughs> so I appreciate that. It's the truth. Well, no, I, I, I know. That's something I try to drill into my athletes and the remote athletes I work with is you know super compensation something that we discuss a lot that it seems like a lot of people just want to fucking pretend that it doesn't exist that they can keep training through whatever the case right right they just want to keep going and I, and I, and i must say that of all in all the other disciplines i have experienced amazing athletes crossfit is the only segment that i have to ride people like a tractor to, to get a rest day in. It's unbelievable to me how opposed CrossFit athletes are to rest. You know, the, the, that pain you get gets kind of addictive, though, be honest with you. 
that doesn't matter. And if it, you know, <laughs> what, look, body, there is no greater pain experienced by an athlete than a bodybuilder. Okay, you can say CrossFit is so badass that you know, you know, our work warm up is you know, our workout is your warm up. However, you want to put it. However, whatever kind of bullshit you want to listen to, that, that bolster your ego however you need to. The fact of the matter is you're a human being. You have a physiology that is human. And if you don't respect the boundaries of human physiology, you will fuck yourself up. Period. End of story. And I have tons of examples to prove my point. So... Uh, you know, un unless you are got a born to lose tattoo on your forehead, you need to take a, a break when you're training, especially if you're training at the level that an elite CrossFit level, elite CrossFit athlete trains at. If you must, must take rest days, absolutely one or two a week minimum. So here's a question that I think I'm gonna get some hate hate from uh, my friends on. But more uh, than, what, more than now. <laughs> what point would an athlete, w when would they need to be in their career, in their training cycle or their training age, when they should start reaching out to you if that is a route they wish to go? Uh, wait, wait, wait. I don't, I don't, can you just ask me that again? Okay. So someone, uh, they decide I'm going to go to the CrossFit Games. Do they need to be training for a year, for five years before they actually contact someone like you? No, it, depends, their... it, it depends on the person and their athletic background to begin with. Um, you know, it's a noble thing to wake up one day as a, as a lay person and just say, hey, I'm going to go to the CrossFit Games. I mean, that's probably not going to happen. Okay, so, you know, the people who tend to gravitate towards the upper echelon of a sport are people who already have a sports or athletic background. So, um, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I can't answer that question. I, I guess it would be case specific. It depends on the individual, how old they are, how much, you know, um, uh, you know, athletic background they have, but, you know, people who are pursuing CrossFit at a very high level have a lot of help. You know, they have coaches, there's a lot of programming involved. They have, you know, they have strength coaches, they have Olympic lifting coaches, they have all, all other kind of coach, lots of different kinds of coaching. And they have, you know, uh, you know, other modalities that they participate in, you know, deep tissue massage, dietitians, somebody put together a paleo diet for them, you know, they, they have all kinds of help. So, um, uh, you know, my position in anybody's training camp is a very, very small um, position to hold. I mean, it's not, I'm not the, you know, the guy who's, you know, responsible for all of your athletic quest. I, I, I perform a very simple service at a, at a, in, a, in a very, you know, simplified way that, you know, people tend to, to need. And at what point you need it is kind of just up to the person. Gotcha. Because earlier when you were talking about, you you know, working with unknowns, that's what made me think of when someone should or when they would decide to reach out to you. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, I, you can't I don't think I don't think my my client base is an accurate cross section of what, you know, any, any coach would expect because I, I've got. You know, I've got over three decades in, in this. So, you know, people know of me from, from a long time ago or are, are, are reaching out to me today. So, uh, you know, it, it, I, I, think a lot, I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, who you're, who you're looking for and what their particular, you know, specialty is. So, uh, you know, um, I, I, I've just never, I've, I've never ran into a, I've never run into a person an athlete who has told me, um, you know, I've just, I've been for 10 years, I've wanted to talk to you and I, I've never had that. I've just, people say, yeah, I heard, I, you know, read an article you posted on T nation, or I heard a podcast you did and I'm interested in what you're doing and, you know, can you help me? And, and that, that's really how it, how it comes about. I, I don't advertise. I don't, I don't ask people to, for referrals. In, in fact, quite the opposite. I tell people, don't ever tell anybody you're working with me because that's 
not going to be fair to the guy next to you if I'm working with him too, because you're going to think I'm telling him something I'm not telling you. Um, or if, you know, you, there's a very distinct possibility if word, if, if somebody, the wrong person finds out or hears my name associated with yours, you're getting on the, you're getting on the high risk pool. You're going to get drug tested tomorrow for sure. The, uh, when an athlete's working with you, you, you may or may not be able to answer this or want to, but do their coaches know what's going on? Like, do they change how they train because they know they're taking X amount of compounds? That's an interesting question. Um, some do and some don't. Um, I, I, for some reason, I find that, you know, a lot of CrossFit athletes are afraid of their coaches. Um, I, I think that's a very poor position to be in as a coach. I, I, don't, I don't want anybody fearing me. Um, you know, it's nice to be respected as for your knowledge and your know-how, but I, I don't want anybody being afraid of me. So, and I can't imagine any other coaches would want, you know, fear to be the motivator in your charge, but I guess for some people, that's the only way they can get them to comply. Um, you know, uh, um, coaches who coach athletes that know I'm working with them, um, definitely couch the training accordingly because they know their athlete can recover. So uh, a, a good coach doesn't need that information. A good coach can just tell by how the athlete's performing. If they can, if they're pushing them at a certain level and they're coming back and they're not exhibiting signs of overtraining or fatigue or or falling apart, and they can push the envelope a little more, then you know that's great. It, 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 it may not be because they're working with a guy like me. It may be just because they're a genetic freak. It may be because they have a natural testosterone, epitestosterone ratio of six to one it, it, when everybody else is walking around at two or three. So, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of range that an athlete can exhibit, especially in CrossFit, because there's so many freaking different things you have to do. You know, it's quite possible for an athlete to express a tremendous ability in a certain area and be completely natural. So uh, the only thing that CrossFit does to stymie that idea is, it is like I just said, it's way too broad in the amount of, of athletic endeavors and moves or exercises, whatever, that you have to be proficient at to be a, a, a top-level CrossFit athlete. So that right there tells you that, you know, the, the, deck, is, the, the deck is stacked. Um, it, it's very, very difficult for, for any athlete, regardless of how good they are, to naturally pursue CrossFit at the elite level because it is so freaking hard. You know, all the athletes I got have been busted. I mean, it's always made public. Well, at least I think it's always made public. No one's, I've never seen anyone who says, yeah, I did it and just own it. <laughs> Everyone's always saying, you know, it was in, I had a tainted supplement. I took uh, a freaking a sexual enhancement drug from a friend that whatever the case. Yeah. J jails are full. Prisons are full of innocent people. Yeah. Just, just once just, I wish someone would be like, yep, yeah, I did it. You caught me. Good job. I, that would be nice, you know, but you know, look, look, the funny thing about cheaters is they don't like to get caught cheating, you know, so uh, and, and once they do, they'll cheat their way out of admitting it. So, you know, once a cheater, always a cheater. But I don't look at that as a bad thing. I, I just look at it. The rules are wrong. Um, I don't I don't think steroids should be banned in any sport. You should be able to use as many as you want. That should be part of the deal. It actually is part of the deal. Getting away with it is part of the deal. You know, so um, it just adds another facet, another level of complexity to the to the pursuit when you have to weave around a drug test. Um, but the uh, UFC fighter Chell Sonnen said before, using steroids is not against the rules. Getting caught is against the rules. Yep. Well, it's not entirely true. I mean, they tell you <laughs> they, they, they they tell you that these drugs are banned, so you're not supposed to use them. But you know, the interesting thing is, 
is just because a drug is on the banned list doesn't mean there's a test for it. So you have that angle to work as well. But um, I think the better I think the better saying is, uh, you know, ju just because you pass the drug test doesn't mean you're clean. Hmm. Well, yeah, back to Lance Armstrong. Right, exactly. Most tested athlete on earth. He never failed. I, mean, this, I, I know of many athletes who are frequently tested and they pass all their drug tests. The only person I've ever seen own it is, again, Chel Son in the UFC fighter. He said on a podcast when he got the call, they said that his testosterone, to epi testosterone was like 16 to 1. <laughs> and he, said, test, he said, test it again. That's too low. <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah he owned it so you know you gotta respect him for oh, that yeah. no matter i mean you should you know if you fuck up and get caught i think you should admit it i mean you're standing there busted you're dead they, they got you dead to rights just to sit there and whine and cry that it wasn't you i didn't do it my supplements were tainted fuck that admit it and, and admit you were wrong and you, and you, and you fucked up, you failed, you messed up, you, you, you didn't do it right. You know, I mean, what's a girl going to say who gets popped for a freaking, you know, Trenbolone or, or, or Anadrol? What, what's she going to say? Oh, it was an accident. Like, like how, how is that an accident? Oh no, here we go. One girl, uh, recently said that, uh, her boyfriend was on steroids yeah. and she ingested it from kissing him. Right. And I, I saw a doctor had done the research on it and said that she would have needed to ingest like two quarts of his saliva for any trace amounts to show up in her system. I, I don't even think that. that that's just absolutely so preposterous that, I, you know, I, I don't even know where people come up with this shit. So do you... Is there ever a chance that, you know, this sport or any other sport, regardless, are going to be clean? Nope. Not ever. Well, that sucks. Well, I take it back. If, if they take away all the prize money, if they take away all of the endorsements, if they take away all of the fame and the notoriety and all the money that goes along with it, and they just make it a game that's played on a Saturday afternoon in a park, and they don't even care who wins – then, yeah, they'll probably, I think even then you're going to get people using drugs. But sports, sports in America, sports internationally, internationally, I work with people all, you know, all over the world. And, you know, especially in Latin America, the, the drugs are just expected. There's, there's, there isn't an athlete I know south of the Mexican border that's, that is, that is cognizant of the fact that they're not going to have a drug cycle in their, in their program. It's expected. Yeah. The, uh, if you've seen, I'm sure you've seen the uh, documentary Icarus about the, uh, the Russian, uh, right. guy for anti-doping. Yep. That, that's crazy, man. That's pretty much how it's done. Shit. Well, do you have anything you want to add to this before we, uh, and, and well, before we do that, I don't want people to think that we're trying to bash CrossFit or say it's, you know, everyone's on steroids. It's just, you know, I've been seeing uh, all these people getting busted and I wanted to find someone who could kind of shed some light on what's going on there. And I really do appreciate you coming on and, you know, no matter what, uh, the conver which way the conversation went, you know, this is, uh, we're neither, I am neither for nor against. It ain't my damn business what someone puts in their body. But I do feel like there does need to be more information out there because, like we were saying, women are getting busted for things that they should never take and can really jack them up. Yeah, you know, that becomes a double-edged sword right there because if you're giving them information, then they're going to use it to cheat. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I'm, I'm not against CrossFit. I'm, I'm not against, you know, the, the uh, you know, an image of a clean sport. I'm not against any of that. But I'm a realist in this realm. And, you know, I, I have my client base as proof of what 
you know, people are doing and what the level they're at doing it. So, you know, um, I can, I can say very confidently um, that for a fact, there are games athletes, athletes competing in the games who are on juice, on steroids. I know it for a fact. So, you know, you, you can disbelieve me. You can call me a liar. You can say I'm looking for notoriety, whatever. I don't need any notoriety. I've got all the notoriety I've ever wanted and some. So um, th 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 there's, there's nothing I can say that's going to make me any more notorious than I already am. So, uh, you, know, you know, there, uh, there, there could, it is possible, though, that there could be genetically gifted athletes that do yeah, make it. To the absolutely. Top. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are gifted athletes. We call them outliers. There are gifted athletes out there that are genetically predisposed to be super amazing at something specific. Sometimes it's CrossFit, bodybuilding, MMA, baseball, basketball, whatever. There are genetic freaks. They are genetically superior to everyone else pursuing that same thing. They have a certain assemblage of, of tendon and ligament connections and muscle bellies and, and, and co coordination and ability, psycho psychology, all the lights that have to be green are green, and that's them, and we have them, and those are the people who are amazing. You put those guys on steroids, and you get a superhuman animal. But even without it, they are the ones who are setting the standard of performance. And the person who really, really wants to compete and really, really wants to be that good, but were genetically shortchanged, they only have one other path to the top and that's to cheat there's no other way to do it you know we're talking about those uh genetically gifted athletes and I i'd like to remind everyone how captain america got his powers <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying i'm just saying right no, I mean that's that, that that's I, I want to make that clear too. I, I'm not I am not by any means saying that every single solitary CrossFit athlete is a is a juice head. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there are some amazing athletes participating in CrossFit, and the bar is set so freaking high, and there are so many people interested in doing it that it is just a very ripe arena for people to want to take drugs to be better. You know, in my gym, we uh, we've got a really great powerlifting team, and uh, my guys, I, I know all of them are clean, but we also go and we compete in non-tested events where we know that we're competing against people on steroids, and I don't give a fuck. That's where the records are that we want to go and break. We know we can do it. We're doing it clean. So it doesn't matter. I don't care that the guy who's lifting after my guy is on anything at all because, well, it's his fucking business. We're doing it clean. We're still breaking the records. I mean, that, that's a good point. I mean, there, there shouldn't be – it's like when people promote the fact that they're gay. Who cares? I don't need to see a rainbow sticker in the back of your car so I can know that you're gay. I don't give a shit if you're gay. Why do you need to pro pr promote the fact that you're gay? Can't you just be another human being walking past me on the street and just be an innocuous person? Why do you have to advertise what your sexual preference is? I, I don't understand that. By the same token, it spills into sports. I don't need to know that you'd want to take drugs. I don't need to know that you hate taking drugs. I don't need to know that you have an opinion about taking drugs. If you want to hire me to increase your performance, we're going to increase your performance. We have a bunch of tools available at our disposal. I'll discuss all of them with you. You tell me the ones you're okay with, the ones you're not okay with. The ones you're not okay with, we won't use. And we won't talk about it. It's just going to be your performance is going to be what does the talking. 
And that's the way sports should be. It's too many people climbing up your leg, trying to look inside of you, trying to see what the fuck you're doing. It doesn't matter. What matters is how you perform. If you perform so good that the only response that people can have as a reaction to your performance is they must be on drugs. And I would take that as a tremendous compliment. Whether it's true or not, I would take that as a tremendous compliment. You know, I got a buddy who uh, I was in the army with and he ended up special forces and he was doing CrossFit before I knew about CrossFit. He was huge compared to the last time I seen him. I'm like, man, I, I, I just got to ask, are you, are you on <laughs> something? And he's like, no, but thank you for asking. Like, he, was, he was really, uh, he wasn't being a dick. He was happy that I asked because I made him feel sure. great about himself. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody wants to be noticed for what they're doing. So I'm assuming you don't want to give out your contact information for people to contact you. And if they need to find you, that they can figure out the way themselves. You know, I, 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 Chief Inspector Clouseau can find me. I mean, just go on Facebook. I'm right there. I mean, I, I, I was interviewed not that long ago. And the guy goes, yeah, well, you're really hard to find. I go, how can I possibly be hard to find? All you got to do is Google me. I mean, I'm really hard, really easy to find. So, um, you know, I, you know, I, no, I don't want to give out my personal info. Um, you know, I, like I said, you can find me on Facebook real easy. Um, oh, that's how I found you. <laughs> it's it's how most podcast. people find me. Um, so, you know, and I answer, I answer as close to everybody as humanly possible. I mean, I, you know, I get a lot of response of, you know, um, communications, but, um, no, I, I try to answer everybody and, and, you know, I, I, that's where my clientele comes from. A, a long time ago, somebody told me, if you're good at something and people know who you are, they will come and find you. And I have not spent one red cent in three decades advertising myself because I have had, I have enjoyed a very steady flow of clientele and I've just because they came and looked for me. So I mean, you know, I'm blessed that way. I don't have to promote. I don't have to advertise. I don't have to do anything except do my job right. I do my job right, and that's all that matters. Now, I would like to, uh, one last thing, so that people will know that you're not just some guy off the street, because if they don't, you know, come from a different kind of world, that maybe they don't know who you are. Um, could you give a little bit about the magazines you've written for, just so people can see those references behind you? Sure. Yeah, I was senior editor for Muscular Development Magazine for 18 years. Before that, I worked freelance was and was published in some weeder publications and a couple of other magazines and periodicals that are no longer with us. Um, I have an extensive article bank on tnation.com. You can search my name on there and read some of my CrossFit articles on on uh, on tnation. Um, I have a, a website called rxmuscle.com that you can go to and find out all kinds of stuff about um, bodybuilding and training and, you know, nutrition and drugs and whatever on that website. Um, yeah, I've pretty much just been involved in the industry for that long. I mean, eight, you know, eight, 18 years of muscular development was a real long time. Um, and, you know, since since... I left there in 2009. Since then, I started RX Muscle. I have that, and since then, oh, I was um, I was managing editor for Muscle Mag in Canada for for a while, a um, couple of years, and then um, I pretty much got away from print and just got you know provided content for you know many websites uh, you know in their digital marketing realm and in their you know other marketing pursuits where they needed content. So, you know, as the, as the, as the, as the, you know, writing industry has changed because of the internet and pretty much killed print, you know, the, the writers have had to, you know, kind of adapt to the, to the environment and, and do other things other than try to get their articles published in magazines. So T nation is probably, excuse me, T nation is probably the most, you know, widespread and pervasive site where my work can be found today. So if you want to know who I am and read some of my work, just tnation.com and search John Romano. 
Well, I'm sure any 80s kid who uh, ever worked out and bought a magazine had one of your articles in it. <laughs> I was, sure. I, yeah. Yeah, I yeah but this up. generation is way, you know, it's it, 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 they're on, you know, they're on Snapchat and, and um, Instagram and doing things that, you know, I don't do. So uh, there's there's definitely a generation gap there. But, um, you know, Facebook is as far as I've taken my social media. I probably won't go further than that. Although I do have an Instagram account. I just don't really ever pay attention to it. Um, I should probably start. But, um, you know, my, my, my tenure in the industry from anybody who knows the industry knows who I am and knows what I've done. So um, I, I'm not at a loss to, to, for that. So, um, like I said, if you, if you, want, if you want current, current material from me, T Nation is the place you'll get it. Buddy, if you'll hang around just a second after I close this out, but I really appreciate you doing this with me. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who's going to be hating on me for uh, putting this out there, but I really do think there's a lot of people who they, they need more education. I mean, if you're going to go down this road, at least, you know, be smart about it. Exactly. And, and especially, you know, I work, the majority of my clients are women um, in bodybuilding anyway. And although CrossFit too, um, you know, women are, women are, you know, they need to be treated differently than men when it comes to these compounds and it comes to, you know, these kinds of, uh, drugs. So, um, you know, especially for women, you just gotta be really careful because the, the mistakes you make in this realm will stay with you. They will not go away. Um, they may they may subside a bit, it may attenuate somewhat, but they will not go away. You will be marked for life. So you ought to know what you're doing before you do it is is a great you know concept to ponder. Man, I really appreciate your time with me. Anytime. I appreciate I'm glad to do it. I hope it helps somebody. Thank you, buddy. Anytime.